Okay, the next game on our list is going to be Sonic Drift 2 for the Game Gear. Now, many people don't like this game, and usually it's because they immediately dismiss it as a Mario Kart ripoff and just say, the game sucks, done. However, I personally like this game. Sure, it's got its, fault, it's, got its flaws, but in my opinion, it's an enjoyable game. And you'll see why I think that in a minute. Now, we're going to go to the Chaos GP mode. Now, you got four, three cups to choose from. I think there's an unlockable fourth one somewhere. And you got six, seven characters to choose from, each with their own at different attributes. And for this review, we're going to play as Sonic. All right, we got a decent setup here. Now, let's go over the story. Now, the story of the game is there's this tournament that's going on, this racing tournament, and... Whoever wins gets all the Chaos Emeralds. Basically, whoever wins a race gets all the Chaos Emeralds, which is kind of stupid because, yeah, let's take these very valuable, very powerful gems and just give them away as cash prizes. That's a great idea, don't, don't you think? Anyway, um, now people, now one thing that, it differs from Super Mario Kart mainly because it's not set up like Mode 7 where you can pretty much free roam wherever you want. Instead, it's set up more, more, more like traditional racers like Pole Position, except like Mario Kart has power-ups. Now, the power-ups in the game are very similar to that of Mario Kart. Like, you've got mu enemy, you got items that mimic the mushroom, the feather, the, and there's several weapons that mimic the banana. Except you can shoot them in front of you instead of behind you. Now, every character has their own individual powers, and usually they're just their ability to use this a certain power whatever they want. They have to pay two rings for to do this, though. Except for Metal Sonic, who has to pay three rings, because his is really good. Now, for the most part, the game is pretty fair. However, one thing that makes the game... One of the flaws of the game is the AI. Specifically for Sonic and Metal Sonic, because they have the ability to use speed boosts. Now, much like Super Mario Kart, each AI opponent can use their own individual weapons as many times as they want. And that's really bad when it comes to Sonic and Metal Sonic, because that means they can speed boost whenever they want, and they can get ahead of you very quickly. They'll occasionally slip up, maybe they'll go off-road or something, but most of the time, they'll just speed boost endlessly. And the only way to stop them is if you have a character like... Amy, or Eggman, or Fang, who can shoot projectiles in front of them. And even then, they have to be on the screen in order for it to happen. Now, one thing you'll, have, you'll notice about this game is, mainly, like, you, the weapons that you drop, if you're playing, like, Eggman or Amy or something, the weapons you drop won't really affect any of the AI unless it happens on screen. So if... So if you... Say you drop, like, a mine somewhere, um, and you think that the person behind you is going to hit it, they won't hit it, and unless they're ahead of you the next lap, that is, they won't be able to hit it. And that's kind of a bit, kind of a disadvantage because in this game, there are tracks that don't follow a traditional circuit. They go by for a point 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 system, which definitely adds to the variety of the game. Now, the controls of the game, I should have talked about this earlier, but the controls of the game, everyone says that it's hard to turn, but in, it really isn't. You just need to know how to drift. Which, base, which, of course, like most games, is to hold the B button down and turn. Now, every course has their own individual gimmicks, like the, here you got bumps. Some tracks have enemies, some tracks have huge jumps. Which defi definitely adds to the variety of the game, and... You can actually, and it, also there's an option to turn the enemies off in the options menu. You'll still have, like, the individual um, obstacles on the courses here, like the craters and such, but... The enemies will be gone. Also, the graphics for an 8-bit console are really good because it shows off some really good 3D effects. There's like levels that take place in tunnels and the effect is just amazing in my opinion. In terms of graphics though, um, the only gra yeah, graphical problems that I really saw were like the last few um, courses in the last cup which take place in outer space and I don't know, the space effect is sort of disorienting. And I, I, I don't know, it just didn't look good to me. As for the music of the game, while the music is pretty good, there's nothing real memorable or nothing that really stands out amongst the different songs. Now, this is one of those um, checkpoint circuits I was telling you about. And here's where it definitely starts to be on like Mario Kart, because you got things like bottomless pits and stuff to deal with. 
every course has its own individual gimmicks. You, the only ones that are sort of similar to each other are usually the opening ones, but that's usually because, of course, the, or the first course has to be really easy. Now, in terms of the other AI opponents, they're not, they're not very bad at all. Like, really, it's only Sonic and Metal Sonic that really, really get on my nerves. <laughs> I'm not doing too good here. Another power-up you'll run into are the reverse power-ups. Now, the which of course will reverse your direction, but the one thing that doesn't work with these items is that there's no indication of when the power-up or power-down actually this ceases to be in effect. So you might still think that it's still in effect when and then you'll just take a long turn somewhere. There's like no musical cue or anything or any like sprite animation that tells you that the game the reverse power up has stopped working. Again, but it's not all courses, so it's not that big a deal. So overall, this is a very underrated racer in my opinion. I recommend it to anyone who's looking for a Mario Kart style game. Um, overall, I'd probably give it like a 6.5 out of 10. So, till next time, this is Magnum Mill 91 signing off.